do not be one of those people right that just puts in a course on google and then the first school that pops up is where they apply to or the first two schools that pop up is where they apply to mm -mm, you are going to waste your money there are more strategic ways to make sure that you pick schools that would increase your chances of admission <laughs> Welcome to Winnie Student World. My name is Winnie and today we're going to talk about qualities that make a school tailor fit for you. Now tailor fit schools increase your chances of getting admitted and getting funded as an international student. Do not be one of those people right that just puts in a course on Google and then the first school that pops up is where they apply to or the first two schools that pop up is where they apply to. Mm -mm, you are going to waste your money. There are more strategic ways to make sure that you pick schools that would increase your chances of admission. So at the end of this video, you're going to learn seven different ways to assess those schools and seven different ways to make sure that a school is tailor fit for you. All right, let's jump right in. The first thing is you want to pick a school that aligns with your area of interest. So for example, if I am interested in HIV and AIDS, right, and I want to apply to graduate school, I will not just apply to any graduate school that is in my broad area of maybe public health or maybe health education or maybe nursing. Instead, I'll look for schools that have my broad area, which is nursing or public health, and also have my area of interest, which is HIV and AIDS research, right? An example is what you see on your screen right now, which is University of Pennsylvania. They have a Penn Center for AIDS research. So if I was a graduate student and I was applying for programs, picking schools that have a center for AIDS research increases my chances of entry because they know that I am a student that has what they need or is interested in what they have to offer with regards to that area. Now, if I pick a school that has an area that I am not interested in or doesn't match what I have on my CV or personal statements, right? Or I pick a school that does not have, you know, resources or research structures to support what I want to do. Even if I'm a good student, even if my grades are wonderful, my GPA is good, my standardized test scores are good, even if that happens, they will still not accept me. Can you see? All right, the next thing is you want to pick schools that have resources that you need. What does that mean? There are times when, for example, if you are an engineering student, you need schools that have certain equipment or you need schools that have certain, you know, structures or certain things that are specific to your area of interest. That happens. Or you could be a student, for example, who wants to translate their research idea or their area of interest to a startup or a business or something, right? If a school has that structure and you tell them in your personal statement or your CV that you're interested in making use of that structure that they have, you become an attractive candidate to them. An example is what you see on your screen, which is Penn State University. Penn State University has an innovation park that helps people translate their ideas to companies and startups and brands and patents, ETC. If you are interested in that, and again, you put that in your personal statement and you tell them that they have the exact resource that you need to do this and accomplish this, you rise to the top of the list of applicants that they believe will be successful in their program or in their school. Now, this could vary and be different depending on your area of interest, your course, or the schools that you're looking for. The next thing is schools that have mentors or advisors for you. Ah, this one is so important as a graduate student. It's very important. In fact, it could make or mar your graduate application. If you don't pick somebody that, number one, is tailored or is, you know, somewhat related to what you are interested in or what you plan to study. And number two, a person who can advise and mentor you throughout that program. And it is not the school's job to find that person for you it is your job to find that person in fact you should let finding of mentors and advisors guide the way you even apply to graduate schools 
because sometimes that could be the thing that gets you in even before you submit an application. Let me show you an example. As you can see on your screen, Georgia Southern University, their College of Public Health has a list of research areas and faculty members that are in each of those research areas. And so if you're interested in applying to one of these areas, right there and then you can see a list of people that study that and those people will be possible or good mentors or advisors for you in that program. If you're able to to select these people and include them in your personal statement ding 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 if you also email those people before you submit your application to tell them that you're interested in working with them they know to expect you when you submit your application you know somebody could reach out to them and say hey dr so and so this student applied that they're interested in working with you have they spoken to you dr so and so will say yes they have spoken to me i think they are good students that's how you entered can you see that now all right the next thing is finding schools that prioritize your area of interest or your area of research. This is different from schools that have your area of interest or your area of research. When schools state that they prioritize this, it means that they are extra looking for people who are doing this. They're trying to grow that program. They're trying to invest more in it which means they want more graduate students, right? Or more undergraduate students who are interested in that area. An example is what you see on your screen with University of Kentucky. University of Kentucky prioritizes substance use disorder for research initiatives. And so what that means is if you're applying there and you're interested in substance use and abuse, you are interested in an area of priority for the university, right? Think about it. Like you are interested in what the university considers important. That is very, very important. All right. The next thing is schools that are seeking diversity. Schools that are interested in either diversifying their student body or their faculty body or, you know, whatever. They just want people who are diverse. So different skin colors, different backgrounds, different genders, you know, just different people. Right those schools also have a higher chance of investing more into bringing international students. One way to know a school that is seeking diversity is to see if that school has a diversity and inclusion office or a diversity and inclusion program or, you know, a diversity and inclusion strategic plan, right? An example is what you can see on the screen with Northeastern University. Northeastern University has, you know, a strategic theme for diversity and inclusion, right? And they have people who are dedicated to working on that. So if you're an international student and you're applying there and you even add in your statements that one of the things that attracted you to this school is that they are interested in diversity and that you want to contribute to that or you feel like this would be a good resource for you, ding, 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 ding. Can you see that? All right. The next thing is schools that are located in rural areas, schools that are not located in the big cities like New York, Miami, you know, and all those fun places, schools that are located in smaller towns that you have never heard of, or, you know, states that don't come up in the news like that, those type of schools. Now, the thing with schools like that is they could be very good schools, but because of their location, they don't attract as much people to them. This becomes an asset to you as an international student because when you apply to such schools they are probably also looking for diversity they are also looking for you know students to fill up their programs and they also want to you know broaden the things that they offer and the, their student body and you will be a prime candidate for that because if you apply to schools like that they will be interested in you extra interested in you because they don't come by applicants like you quite easy now you could go on google and put in you know schools universities located in rural areas in the u.s or universities located in rural areas in canada and things will pop up you could also look for blog posts like what you see on the screen right now that show 40 most beautiful college campuses in rural areas and scroll through and see the schools that are listed there all right the last but not the least the last but the most important in addition to everything that we have talked about so far is schools that have requirements that fit with your applicant's profile right now some programs will list the skills they want you to have the experiences they want you to have the educational background they want you to have 
how the minimum uh, number for your GPA, the minimum score for your standardized test scores. They would list all those things. And you have to compare those things with what you're bringing to the table. Now, granted, it doesn't always have to be a perfect fit, meaning maybe out of 10 requirements, you're missing one, or maybe out of eight requirements, you're missing one, right? That doesn't mean that out of eight requirements, you're missing five, or out of eight requirements, you're missing six. You're completely off what they need and what they are looking for, and they will not take your application seriously, right? So an example is what you see on the screen with Johns Hopkins University, their PhD in nursing program. I want to show you an example with them because they have an extensive list of requirements that they use to, you know, guide students that want to apply to them. So you can see they want you to have a bachelor's or a master's degree. If you don't have that, don't bother, right? They want you to have a written statement of your goals, which is a personal statement. They want you to have research interests that meet with, that match the faculty expertise. So if you don't see a faculty member that is doing what you are interested in or what, you know, matches your CV and your experiences, don't apply there. You know, GRE scores are optional. Check. That's good. Minimum GPA of 3.0. If your GPA is less than that, right, you should check in with them before you apply because they have stated that their minimum that they are going to consider is a 3.0, right? Interview with faculty members, writing samples, resume, letters of recommendation, a copy of your official license, official transcripts, English proficiency exams, all those things are listed right there. And so you would take this, compare it with what you bring to the table and then decide if it's a good fit for you. The more you mirror what schools are looking for in their admission requirements, the higher the chances of them giving you a favorable review in the admission process or in the funding process. Okay, I trust and I hope that you have learned a lot from this video. Ask me questions, type in the comment section, tell me what you learned from watching this and I look forward to, you know, hanging out with you again in the future. All right.